Today's video is sponsored by Delete Me. On the 20th of August 1977, Voyager 2 was launched. Then on the 5th of September 1977, Voyager 1 was launched. Their mission would take advantage of a favorable planetary alignment to explore Jupiter and Saturn. Then during the mission, the destination was changed so that Voyager 2 would fly on to Uranus and Neptune, and Voyager 1 would fly past Saturn's moon Titan and be put on a trajectory out of the plane of the solar system and into interstellar space. Once Voyager 2 had flown by Uranus and Neptune, it too would be on a one-way ticket out of the solar system. But this wasn't the first time that spacecraft had been deliberately sent out on such trajectories. The early Pioneer program of 1972 and 73 sent space probes Pioneers 10 and 11 to also explore Jupiter and then Saturn before traveling out of the solar system. Both of these spacecraft carried a small metal plaque identifying their name and place of origin for the benefit of any other spacefarers that might find them. So with the Voyager probes, it was thought that it would be a good idea to put a more ambitious message aboard Voyagers 1 and 2. In essence, a time capsule that would carry a story of our world to any terrestrial spacefarers that might find either of the probes in the far distant future. Now, some say that we shouldn't give away our location and details about ourselves to possibly hostile aliens. But what you have to remember is the Voyager probes are traveling very slowly compared to the speed of light. It would take them between 77 and 84,000 years, because Voyager 1 is traveling a little bit faster than Voyager 2, for the Voyagers to reach the nearest star, Proxima Centauri, which is only 4.2 light years away. But they aren't going towards Proxima Centauri. It will take them about 20,000 years for them just to pass through the Oort cloud, which is a shell of icy bodies that surrounds the solar system that contains trillions of bits of ice and rock but is considered by some to be the true edge of the solar system. And once it has left this, they will feel the gravitational effect of other stars more strongly than our sun. Now, 20,000 years is a very long time for modern humans. Go back 20,000 years and we're in the mid stone age. Considering the exponential growth in technology in the last 200 years since the beginning of the industrial revolution, and provided that we avoid self-inflicted and natural disasters, 20,000 years in the future, and we could be very different to how we are now, and may well have become a spacefaring species ourselves. Basically, if aliens were to find the Voyagers in our lifetimes, then they are already here in the solar system. And this is what many fail to comprehend about the huge amount of time that lays ahead of the Voyager, Pioneer, and New Horizons probes. Their futures stretch into the billions of years, beyond that of the Sun, a lifetime of our Earth for certain, let alone any life that may well be on it. When the Voyagers were launched in the 1970s, we didn't have the internet and the digital ecosystem that so much of our modern lives now depend upon. But with the digital tracking of all our movements online and the digitization of our personal data, a large and highly profitable business model has evolved to tie these two together and serve us with things like personalized adverts, video feeds, and news based on what they think we want to see, hear, and read. At the bottom of all this are data brokers, companies that buy and sell data to anyone who wants it, which includes emails, names, current and past addresses, phone numbers, age, occupation, and more. And this is where the problem lies and where our sponsor, Delete Me, can help you. If anyone can buy data about you or your family, it can become a security or even a personal safety risk if you work in places like the government, the military, civil services, or you have a high profile. While you can request that these companies delete the data they hold on you, with well over 750 data brokers around the world, where do you start? And this is where Delete Me comes in. Delete Me has been helping normal people like you and I get their personal information removed from data brokers since 2010 in the US, UK, and Europe. Delete Me is simple to use. You just select the plan you want, fill in the online application, and Delete Me will contact the hundreds of data brokers to remove you from their lists. 
You will receive regular privacy reports that show how much data was found, where it was found, and where it was removed from. You can do this for yourself or for your family. And if you use the joindeleteme.com forward slash droid link in the description below or scan the QR code next to me today, you'll receive a 20% discount. So what about the golden records that are fixed to the sides of the Voyagers? The idea of the golden records was thought about at the time by Carl Sagan and his wife, Andrian. Others, including Frank Drake, John Lomberg, and in collaboration with NASA, helped assembling in the 115 images and a variety of natural sounds, musical pieces and greetings in 55 languages and printed messages from President Carter and UN Secretary General Waldheim. It would include not only pictograms, but also sounds and images. These would be encoded onto a disc as an analog waveform, and the disc was mounted onto the outer body of a space probe. The images were scanned like an old style TV and encoded in an analog form composed of 512 vertical lines. What we have to bear in mind here is that this was the late 1970s and methods for encoding data onto an object that was expected to remain in space for anything up to tens of billions of years or more was very limited. But they realized that the phonograph record was one of the most efficient means of compressing the variety of data into a single space. So using a metal copy of a vinyl disc seemed to be the best way to produce it. Due to the popularity of the Pioneer plaques, which were also created by Sagan and Drake, it was thought that the Golden Record would also be good PR for the unmanned mission. But if we were to launch another space probe today, for example called Voyager 3 to follow on behind, would we still use a Golden Record to tell the story of humans and the planet they lived on? Or with advances in technology since the 1970s, would we use another form of media to hold that information? But let's look again at the golden records because although they are very similar to the vinyl records found here on earth and that you and I used to play our music on and sometimes still do, there are some major differences. Firstly, and most obviously, it is not made from vinyl and it is not a gold plated vinyl record. It's actually a gold plated copper record and it can be played so it's not just for show and it even comes with its own stylus. Although it can be played, it won't play correctly on a traditional record deck because to pack in all the audio information and images on the record as an analog signal, its design speed is 16 and two thirds RPM instead of a normal 33 RPM. So you would need a custom speed controller to play it here on earth. And there are 12 copies of the record, two in space and the rest are in various NASA centers. Even though many people think there is nothing in space, there is interstellar dust, and at the speed at which the voyagers are traveling, which is about 56 to 61,000 kilometers per hour, each tiny impact damages the record, not to mention charged particles from our sun in the solar wind, and much more damaging cosmic rays from objects like supernovas and black holes out in the Milky Way. Each time they hit the record, they can knock atoms out of the crystalline structure of a metal, weakening over time. It's a bit like being sandblasted, but with atomic nuclei. And over enough time, maybe billions of years, it will wear down the metal in a similar way. So to combat this, they made a cover to protect the record and also to act as an infographic to show where the probe came from and how to play the record with the supplied stylus at the correct speed. The cover is made from aluminium, plated with an ultra pure sample of uranium-238. The reason for this is twofold. Firstly, uranium is very dense and blocks X-rays, gamma rays, and cosmic rays about five times more effectively than lead. And secondly, any advanced civilization that may find the Voyagers could use the ratio of the remaining uranium to other elements to determine the age of the record and the space probe itself. There will also be a subtle difference in how the two voyages are affected by the course they are on. To find out how much their different courses will affect the lifetime of the records, Nick Oberg at the Captain Astronomical Institute in the Netherlands and a colleague calculated which, if any stars, the two Voyager spacecraft may encounter in the long future of our galaxy. 
It'll be about 30,000 years by the time they pass Ross 248, a red dwarf. But it will be 500 million years by the time they have completed one orbit of the Milky Way. And during that trip, they will oscillate above and below the plane of the galaxy, with Voyager 1's up and down path being more than that of Voyager 2. Oberg calculated that during this time, each of the space probes would pass within 150 AU, or about three times the distance of the Sun to Pluto, of at least one star. This would also take Voyager 1 into areas where there is much more intergalactic dust, which means that Voyager 2's cover will likely remain legible, but Voyager 1's might be eroded. Both records are calculated to last about 5 billion years or more, but by then they will be caught up in the merger of the Milky Way and the Andromeda Galaxy. From there on, Oberg's computer models show that there is a 1 in 5 chance that they could be kicked out of this new galaxy and into the galactic neighbourhood, effectively in between galaxies. Here, the high energy cosmic rays would pose the biggest danger. But they could also float on through intergalactic space, well away from any stars, for trillions and trillions of years. In this far future, there would be no main sequence stars and it would only be populated by white dwarfs, dead stellar cores, black holes and neutron stars. But what if we were to send a new Voyager with modern storage? The most resilient data storage we have yet developed is fused quartz, in which data is written with a femtosecond laser onto the nanoscales. 12 centimeter disks using this method can store up to 360 terabytes of data and these are estimated to last at least 14 billion years. But the problem with these is you need a highly sophisticated technology to be able to read the data stored using two optical dimensions and three spatial coordinates that are written throughout the quartz disk at nanometer dimensions. That would take a whole lot more explaining than the cover of the Voyager records would allow, and any kind of electronic reader that was sent along with it would decay long before the quartz disks, which kind of defeats the whole object of the exercise to be able to show who we were, where we came from, and what we were like in the simplest, easiest to understand form. So maybe in a strangely futuristic retro way, the 1970s tech of a metal version of a vinyl record might well be the best thing we could send out into the universe now to say yes we did exist. So thanks for watching and if you enjoyed the video then please thumbs up, share and subscribe and a big thanks go to all our patrons for their ongoing support.